Georgia, this is my mother, Evelyn. Georgia nodded. Should she get up and shake her hand? No, she'd wait until they left, if at all. No one shook hands during the era of COVID. Ellie told me about your sister. That's got to be hard. My condolences. Evelyn cupped her hands around her drink as if warming her fingers. Thank you. It is hard. She's... She was the only family I had left. We were twins, you know. Her voice trailed off. I understand, Georgia said. So Evelyn was in her 80s. Looked good, too. How can I help? Susan sipped what turned out to be hot tea. We want to know what happened to Aunt Emily. It's just so weird that she didn't tolerate the vaccine when people much less healthy than her are doing fine. Georgia turned to Susan's mother. Have you been vaccinated, Mrs. Seiler? Call me Evelyn. And yes, I've had both and a booster. I was sore for a day or so and had chills, but that was all. So no reaction like your sister? No. A look of anguish came over Evelyn. They did an autopsy, but didn't find anything out of the ordinary. The doctor said two to five people in a million die from a severe reaction. She shook her head. We just can't figure it out, but I need to. Georgia understood. When someone close passed away in uncertain circumstances, the people nearest and dearest to them needed an explanation. They needed to make sure there was nothing they could have done to stop it, for their own peace of mind, for closure. She hated that term, closure, a vague expression everyone was supposed to aspire to when grief struck. Why? Most people would never forget that someone close to them passed away. She knew from her days as a cop that if a person was missing and the body finally showed up, knowing what had happened did help the grieving process. It was the word closure, an awkward word devoid of emotion that couldn't possibly capture the storm of feelings unleashed by grief. Even when a relationship was toxic, her late father had been a dysfunctional drunk, but Georgia still thought about him. Ellie said they're checking with the manufacturer, right? Evelyn nodded. The doctor said someone would, but he didn't give me details. Georgia pondered it. You know, it could be a health issue you don't know about. Even Evelyn might not have known about it. I doubt it. My sister could bench press 150 pounds. I can only do 100. Georgia almost smiled. Sibling rivalry? If so, it was gentle. And then when those other poor men died two days later, well, I can't help thinking all those crazy people who are against the vaccine. Whoa, Georgia said. Speculation is way above my pay grade, at least at this point. I know how hard it is to accept a sudden loss. George's father had dropped dead of a heart attack 12 years earlier. She had hated him when he was alive, but was surprised by how much she grieved. Matt, her boyfriend at the time, told her it wasn't uncommon. People used to being abused often miss their abuser. She pulled herself back to the present. I haven't seen anything in the media about this, Georgia said, which is strange. A few months ago, when a few people got dizzy after getting their shots and went to the hospital, it was all over the news. Mrs. Seiler shrugged. I don't know anything about that, nor do I care. She sat up stiffly, her chest and her chin jutted out. Susan told me what a good investigator you are. I would be more comfortable if you could look into it. I can't sit around and do nothing. I just can't. And of course, I will compensate you for your time. Susan shot Georgia an apologetic look that seemed to say, Now you know what I've been living with all my life. 
Georgia and Ellie exchanged a glance.